Well, we have Mayor Jean Stothert with us today. We periodically invite her into the studio so we can get an update on uh, big growth and development plans from the mayor's perspective. Jean, welcome back to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Well, it's I like honored being to have on the show. It's been a while. Yeah. And you know what? I've told you this before. I'm going to say it again. I listened to your show on Saturday morning, and I had to learn about Omaha. I learned a lot about Omaha just by listening to your show. And you have good stuff on here. Well, well, thank you, and I hope we appreciate that. I hope we had that recorded, Roger, because <laughs> uh, I just Chris, I think we just got a new uh, Girl Omaha promo uh, cut right there. There you go. I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> well, Mayor, thank you for that, and thanks for joining us. And you know, it's it's been a busy year, but as we're here at the start of a new one, yep. what's what? What's your miniature state of the city uh, address for us right now? You know, the one thing I could tell everybody and your listeners is Omaha is doing very, very well. I think people heard I had a little discussion face to face with Warren Buffett the other day, <laughs> and he couldn't <laughs> praise Omaha enough about the financial situation, the growth, the investment in Omaha. Um, the reputation that we are building. I mean, we are a really amazing city. And the thing of it is, is so different about Omaha is philanthropy that we have it like no other city does when we used to have mayor meetings, which we kind of stopped during COVID. But they would say, how do you get all these things done with millions and millions of private money going into it? Because I always bring up our riverfront parks. And, you know, total, if you look at the Luminarium, the museum, 400 million of private money and the city put in 60 that that's quite a return an investment right there and so we've got a really good public private partnership thing going on here in Omaha and things are just happening all the time and they never did slow down during covid either and you could see it from from you know the riverfront downtown all the way west there's things going on and these aren't little developments some are but some are huge developments so i'm really happy with the way things are going. And financially, we're doing really, really well now, too. And we have plenty of things to look forward to. The Luminarium opens this year. The Luminarium the spring, will probably open in April of this year. I just yeah. did a tour of it the other day, and it is going to be just just fantastic. Steelhouse Omaha, I think, opens around May 12th. Steelhouse will open in May. Yes, it will. Then what about the, the expansion, the 90-acre riverfront with, mm-hmm. with, with the – loop the the skate skating loop right it's called the skating ribbon and that is in the part that's in heartland of america park that skating ribbon is the size of a football field and in the summer people could skate in it and then the fall and the winter they'll freeze it over and you can ice skate in it but this is you're right it's 90 acres of city-owned property the gene Leahy mall opened july 1st and it is fantastic and for all the naysayers that said i like the old park better the number of people that are down there every day is amazing. They said, they estimate in the first two months, over 200,000 people have visited the Gene Leahy Mall. So people love it. And, you know, they hired, Mecca runs it, hired somebody to activate it. Things are going on all the time. And they're going to expand that. For example, next holiday season, they're going to have a bigger Christmas tree. They're going to have more events down there. But the rest of it, which would be Heartland of America Park, where the skate ribbon is, and then you go north to Lewis and Clark Landing. Actually, they're almost ahead of schedule now. And they think that that will open in July of 2023. And the other day awesome. I was down at the Luminarium and, you know, you stand in the Luminarium, there's a lot of glass and you're looking right out over the river and then you look in one direction and what you see is this huge children's park. That Luminarium, the feel of it, it's right in the middle of a park and there's activation all around it. You know, the children's park down on the riverfront right by the Luminarium is four times the size of the park that's in the Jean Leahy Mall. Oh my gosh. It's fantastic. I'm going to have to spend some time in that playground. And you know, there's an urban beach down there. There's sand uh, volleyball. The whole thing is just beautiful. It should all be done and open in July of 23. Well, and I think that activation word that you use is key. Ever since the Jean Leahy opened in July, I've stopped by multiple times. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if I had a meeting downtown before going back to the office, I would walk through there always something going on, whether it was summer, whether it was fall. And then, frankly, I was quite impressed during the holiday lights time. Some of those days were pretty darn cold. Yes. Still had a lot of activity. A lot of activity, like all during December, every Friday, Saturday night, there was music playing. There was a light show. When we um, turned the lights on, on Thanksgiving night, you know, we used to do it down on a little makeshift 
stage right there on on across from the library. But we used the pavilion, and there there was a lot of people. We had unfortunately we had a little snafu with the. Five, four, three, two, one. Here's the lights. And nothing turned on for a few. I know for a few seconds. It was one of those Clark Griswold moments. But they turned on and it was just gorgeous down there. And people, like you said, even in the cold weather, they like going down there. So Well, the um the the mall has changed downtown, but it's about ready to change a heck of a lot more. Yes. Um we always say, Mayor, that on Grow Omaha there are there are two kinds of red meat for our listeners. <laughs> One, restaurants, which we talk about all the time. Yes. The other one, skyscrapers. Mm-hmm. We don't get so many of those. But uh, talk a little bit about the Mutual of Omaha skyscraper. What went into that? And uh, just give us a little bit of background about what is going to be something that sure. changes the look of the town. It, it, it certainly will. And you're right. We don't have a lot of skyscrapers that we can talk about. And this one will be the tallest building. Not that that was their goal, but it will be the, the tallest building downtown. And I just, I when I think about it and I think of what our skyline will look like in pictures of Omaha in the future, it's going to be that new Gene Leahy Mall looking at the end. It's going to be this huge building that says Mutual of Omaha, which is going to be fantastic. A lot of work went in there. And I got to give a lot of credit to my team and the plan planning department and our city attorneys. Um, they've done such a good job. But, you know, originally they we had started working with Mutual when they actually wanted to expand their own campus and rebuild on the campus that they are in now in Midtown. We started working with them way back then. And then um, then they, they got very interested, start working with Jason Lanaha on the site called the old UP site uh, downtown, right across from Union Pacific, that is just a shovel-ready um, a block of, of space down there right now. and uh, But they said with the number of employees that they had, 4,000, it was going to be hard for them to build downtown without the advantage of a streetcar to move people in downtown, around downtown, and out of downtown. But that was not where the streetcar was going to go. And our team got together and thought, wait a minute, let's bring them to where the streetcar is. We've got this great library site right at the end of the new Gene Leahy Mall. We knew that is prime real estate. We knew we wanted to build a new library downtown. That was in their facility plan that they had years ago that that library should come down and we should build another downtown library. And so we just started those conversations and and in the end it all worked out. The deal is done. We have handed that site over to Mutual of Omaha. We get the old UP site back, but we get millions of dollars on top of that. And so it was a real good thing that we have done. Now that building is going to, they're going to start their work really, really soon. And you're going to see construction and you're going to see things going on. We demoed it. It's, it's, it's ready to go right now. And I'm so excited about it. I, I can't think of a better thing that we could have building downtown that we, I mean, like I said, our skyline is just going to change forever. Plus you got to build a, what is that, 14th and Dodge? You got a, a beautiful site. The old UP site that is yes. ready to be built on as well for another project. And what we, up. That's right. And what we want to do, we will do the city what we want there. It, it, we want something big. We want something that will generate, obviously, tax revenue. And so we'll do an RFP about what we want down there. And then we'll see what kind of response we had. But I will tell you, there's already a lot of prospects for that site there. There's a lot of interest in it from mixed use to multifamily. So we'll see what we think is the best use for that spot there. You know what I think would be interesting for that site? Um, one of the one of the the ho- one of the things we've lacked in the hotel world in a market the size of Omaha would be a, a big major upper end one, mm-hmm. and we might be getting to that point as a city with our economy and population where mm-hmm. we could support something like that. A lot of cities will do these these mixed use projects where you have an upscale hotel and part of a, a tall building. You'll have some apartments, but a lot of condos, even some penthouses up top, maybe even a little bit of office. Mm-hmm. I've always wondered if something like that wouldn't work on that site. I think it would, as long as you had, you know, some, some, some mixed use, as long as you had some office, some retail in yeah, there, some restaurant condos, in there. Uses. Exactly. And I think that would work really, really well in that area. And there are people that already have that in mind to put that there. So I think, you know, we're not going to let it sit. And uh, people bring up to me, well, wait a minute, what about where the Civic Auditorium was? You got that site too now and it's sitting. But we are working with the developers. There is a plan now that we've kind of revised that plan and uh, for that area where the Civic site was. And I really like it. I think it's going to work a lot better. We're going to uh, add more roads inside of it. I think it's going to be a great spot. So here's a question. This is our 
as close to the 19th anniversary of the Gromaha show we're going to get. So thanks for being here for our anniversary show. We oh. started this, Jeff, January 10th of 2004. That is correct. Really? Yeah, so we're close to 1,000 episodes. And one of the things that we talked about and, and what we need downtown Omaha is a full-size grocery store, whether it's a Hy-Vee, a lot of people want a Trader Joe's, and – do you, do you get those requests as well? We, we hear rumors yes. all the time about a full source grocery store, whether it can support it. And, and a grocery store will go down there when it can be supported and, and they can sell the perishable produce and that kind of stuff and, and, and get enough uh, customer base. A lot of developers have talked about it and want it on their sites. I could name five right now that would like that uh, some sort of a grocery store in the downtown area. You know, in the past, they said, as you said, it didn't the, the number of residents down there wouldn't support a, a grocery store, but that has changed now. And we all know how many how many um, apartments and how many people are moving in the urban core in the downtown area right now. And there are definitely plenty that could support a grocery store down there now. So I you know there's quite a few sites that people have their eye on right now. And I could tell you there's quite a few developers that are working on getting that grocery store well, downtown. part of a shameless plug because it's our show, but uh, Maddie, Grave, and I in our office have the 8,700-square-foot space where Patrick's Market was before it was Flywheel, yes. right at 1416 Howard Street. So if anybody has, it could be a small grocery store, but it could be a lot of office, it could be office use, it could be retail, and uh, we're actually looking for a tenant. There's a, a dock in the back. So anybody that has that, call Maddie or I, and uh, I'd be remiss if while we're talking about downtown if I didn't mention that beautiful space um, right there by the mm -hmm. old market. Find a space on the market. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> and, you know, I want to say, too, what Omaha is booming in now, and I think this is interesting, is apartments. Where it used to be young families would get, you know, their starter home. You would hear that. We aren't seeing those single family starter homes as much in Omaha now. Because but, they're $400,000 to start. Well, that's true, but the apartments are just booming. I mean, I've I had people ask me a lot, there's too many being built. Nobody's going to fill them up. They are filling up as soon as they're built. And these developers aren't going to build these apartments if they don't think they can fill them up. So apartments are really booming in Omaha now. You know, a lot of those apartments are in some of these big districts that are in play downtown. You know, we talked about the Mutual of Omaha Tower, Civic and all that. But I look at the Mercantile District, the Millwork Commons, the Builders District in North mm -hmm. Downtown. Those are those are exciting as well because there are a lot of different building projects in a concentrated area in yes. all three of those instances. Yes, and they're all really different. Like the Mercantile, when that is done, and of course, to remind people, that's where the ConAgra campus was. But when that is done, it's going to make the old market just look like it flows right down to the river. You know, and, and that's that's a mixed use development. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. We are building a parking garage within that that facility there. But that is a, a multi hundred million dollars uh, project, and it's going to be really great. And they're moving that right along. You mentioned Millworks down there, north of the ballpark, uh, west of the ballpark, the Builders District, where Kiewit's new headquarters is. All of that, how that will flow together, and then with the riverfront opening there. And so, you know, one thing I, I have to mention too that we will be looking at is with the um, Arena Convention Center. You know, we might eventually have to expand that. So because we can attract a lot of more uh, conventions and a lot bigger conventions down there. So a lot of interest in that downtown area. Well, think about how different it will be with, with all these projects you're talking about, all the connectivity from the north to the south and from the east to the west. And it's becoming a heck of a lot more walkable. Yes. And then with, with the streetcar expanding to the – it'll go north to, to the convention center, mm -hmm. right? Right. And, and then it'll go out west to the med center. Um, that's what we haven't seen. And – to, to get people to go around and try different things, park your car or take take a bus or take take the streetcar, mm -hmm. and then you can go anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's it. And the purpose of the streetcar is to basically get people in downtown, around downtown, and out of downtown. Because as we all know, parking downtown is choking development. And we've got all these service lots in, in the a downtown, an active, vibrant, urban downtown. You don't want to see a lot of surface parking lots. You want to see 
buildings down there and people down there and businesses down there and restaurants down there. And this, that's how this streetcar is really going to be beneficial for all of those that are against it. And I hear this a lot. I get emails saying, don't do the, the streetcar, Mayor. The, the, it put it to a vote. I would put it to a vote if we were going to raise taxes. I would put it to a vote if people were going to have to pay for it. But we have a finance model that, you know, people will say, I live out West Omaha. I don't want it. I don't want to pay for it. They're not going to pay for it. They but they're, will but they're not use pay it. for it, but they'll use it. I know they will use it. And we had a company, we hired a company called Municap out of Baltimore that went through our financial plan and they looked at every property along the way of the streetcar, along where those rails were from the three block area and then expanded to the six block area. And our estimates of what the increased valuations would be that will pay for the streetcar, that what they estimated conservatively were much more than what we did. You know, it's going to take a little over $300 million to build the streetcar. They're estimating the increased valuations from building and from new mixed use and, and everything that's going to go along around where those rails are is going to bring in over $600 million. So there will be a lot of – there will be enough money for construction of the streetcar plus additional money that we could use for affordable housing – and a lot of other things. It's a win-win situation. Plus, in addition to the property tax revenue increases, presumably, I mean, a lot more businesses operating yes. along that line, some more sales tax revenue as well. And we've talked to, you know, developers along the way and, and that, you know, would you be interested in this? Would you be willing to give 25% of what your TIF is? That's part of the, the amount of funding we're using to the, the streetcar. And it was like, absolutely, yes. You know, I could build here. We could be right on this line. People won't need a car. And that's what we want. You know, that's what we want in an urban setting. You said people want walkability. They, you know, they want entertainment. They want affordable housing. Um, and that's what we're doing downtown. Well, it's going to be exciting because in 10 years, the density along the Farnham Street corridor is going to be impressive. It will be. Well, we have Mayor Jean Stothard with us today. And we have her on periodically to talk about Omaha growth and development projects. And, you know, Gene, we were talking a about the Mutual of Omaha Tower. And in order to make that possible, we had to do library musical chairs. Yes, we did. How's that coming along? I think it's good. I mean, it's to me, it's it's the best of the best. You know, we are going to have a new central library at 72nd and Dodge that is going to be like nothing other that you've the ever seen. I mean, it is just fantastic. And, you know, the, the most of the money for design and construction is being paid by, by private, by philanthropy. Again, the city is going to put in $20 million total, but we're talking probably north of $110, $120 million new library. That is just going to be amazing. So we have – that's underway. Um, the groundbreaking for that is yet to be announced, but it should be soon. And then downtown – you know, we, we did a lot of studying. The library did a facility study, and we knew the Dale Clark Library was very, very inefficient. And what you need downtown is a library that's going to serve its customers. And so where we are moving at 1401 Jones, what we are re, you know remodeling right now, it is going to be the perfect neighborhood library downtown. There will be access with buses. I think once it's open, people will like it. Now, people didn't want to see the Dale Clark go away. There was a lot of people that liked it. But again, I think it's like the Jean Leahy Mall. Once everything is done and they will see this Mutual of Omaha Tower there in a really, really nice new downtown neighborhood library, and then the new one at 72nd and Dodge, which is easily accessible for anybody in Omaha. It's right where all the bus lines are. I think people are really going to be really thrilled. And then we have that temporary space for administration at 84th and Frederick, and that is open too right now in the genealogy I walked collection. There. It looks great. Yeah, it, genealogy is there, so that's open for the public. We tried to do as much as we could during all this transition so that we wouldn't have to decrease services or the availability of our libraries for anybody. Uh, on a kind of related note, we, we keep hearing talk about uh, new police and fire yes. uh, headquarters facilities, and I believe there was an RFP recently. There was an RFP that was put out. Um, we will do. We will uh, engage some local companies, hopefully, for site selection. But this is for would be for design that the RFP went out. We got a lot of interest in it already. Those are back. 
um, and they just came back not long ago. But um, this was a goal of mine that I have I've really given a lot of thought to since I have been mayor. And you know the the old police headquarters downtown and the old fire headquarters, as anybody knows where it is, very very dated. The area that they are in is prime for development. It's, we need to replace them. And I always thought, why don't we do what other cities do and combine fire and police and make a public safety headquarter? And so we need to look you know, at what type of a design we want to put both of them together and then also where we want to put it. Um, we may end up leaving a, a dispatch for fire and police downtown because we have all of our stations very carefully placed around the city for uniform response time. But still, I think that this is absolutely the way to go. And another thing that is great is who I put in charge of this is Tom Warren, my chief of staff. And who is better or better equipped than Tom, who is a former chief of police? And he loves being involved in this this process and and to to go and to do this RFP and decide what we are really going to have as far as a new fire and police headquarters. So before we go beyond there, is that going to still stay downtown or is the site selection process open to a variety of different locations? Uh, You know, I think I think my feeling is it needs to be downtown or close to downtown. But we will, you know, hopefully, like I said, engage uh, some local companies, I hope, to really look for that site selection where the best site will be for that. One one of the things I wanted to work in really fast before we run out of time, it's not really development oriented, but still important. Um, Gene, you, you've hired a new homeless service coordinator and, and yeah. we're optimistic about what that position can do for the city. I did. And I think everybody will agree that the, the homeless situation that we have in, in every big city has is a concern. It should be a concern to all of us. Um, people have asked me now that the Dale Clark Library is gone, where will the homeless go? Well, the, our libraries, our parks were never meant to be a home for the homeless. We, Our goal now is to prevent homelessness and to find them eventually homes, not to be staying in one of our parks or our libraries. And I thought, you know, we do have a homeless task force. Um, There are different people with the Omaha Police Department that are involved with it. Tom Warren is. But I strongly felt like we need one person that thinks, wakes up and this is all they think every day to really help us develop a strategic plan, work with all of our support that we have throughout the city, and really come up with a plan. You know, we do have shelters in Omaha. And the Sienna Francis House, with the help, again, of philanthropy, is a brand-new shelter. Uh, we, we did the old Francis House and turned it into a day shelter. The real, real problem is those who are unsheltered and choose to be unsheltered. And why are they unsheltered? So the encampments that we have around the city in this cold weather, I think it's a real, real concern. And I think we need to address it. And her name is Tamara Dwyer. We're going to have a press conference next week. And so everybody could meet her. But her her whole focus is going to be on a, a plan that we could develop to develop to not only deal with those who are homeless, but to try to prevent it as much as we can. And the interesting thing about her is that she was homeless at one time, too. So yeah. she really, really understands what it's like. And shelters are great. We have great social services here. We could always use more. But the shelters are a temporary solution. Yes. And you, and she is here to find permanent solutions right. and help people turn their lives around. Right. Why are you homeless is the question. You know, I see all these people from young people, teens. You know, there are a lot of teens that are homeless and we just don't have the facilities to really address what the the problems are. There's a lot of mental illness. There's a lot of drug abuse, abuse problems. We need to tackle this situation. And what's great is uh, we had Aaron Hansen who just got sworn in as the Douglas County Sheriff and his plan and his priorities are to work Towards that, you know, the, the, the runaways, the, the people yes. that have mental illness. And, and I've never seen more concentration throughout all forms of government and, and the, the private sector on mental illness, which is great. We, I, we just have to. And Sheriff Hansen, I like saying that. He's going to do a great job. He was, he was a great cop. He was great in the gang unit. And I'm so glad that he is our Douglas County Sheriff. Well, uh, Mayor, I wish we had more time. I do, too. There are a few I, other things I want to ask you, but we don't have time. There's a ton of things I want to talk about. You'll just have to have me back. We, we will. And let's do it sooner rather than later. All right. So Mayor Jean Stothert, ladies and gentlemen, joining us on the Grow Omaha show, talking about Omaha growth and development. We will have her back uh, to talk about more things as the year goes along.
If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.